farmland of America's Deep South. Competitors and fans alike travel from small town USA and metropolitan cities to take part in a unique competition. Where the goal is to push both body and mind to the absolute limit. The idea, as if something emerged from hell itself, is to torment the body into producing adrenaline prior to the mental and physical difficulty of getting a clean hit on multiple targets, hoping that the endorphins will kick in to numb their pain. With an open door policy, competitors from various walks of life are welcome, but it takes a very specific breed to succeed in the challenges set forth. After laying dormant, many competitors find themselves signing up for the event simply based on primal instinct. Like kicking a hornet's nest, the athletes take to the firing range to prove their skills and weaponry. What ultimately unites them is their parallel stories of service and sacrifice to those around them. This is the Tactical Games. I'm John Tygen, also known as Tig. I was one of the uh, GRS team members out of Benghazi. Growing up, I always wanted to be, be in the military. I can pretty much remember probably from second grade at least on up. Uh, we lived across the street from a recruiting station. I went there all the time after school. With only two weeks to prepare for the event, Brownell's sponsored athlete, John Tygen, will be competing in the intermediate class. Tig will be reliant upon his evolved instincts to guide him through each challenge. Weighing only five pounds, Tigan's rifle, the 2A Armament AR, allows him to be mobile, while the Riton Optics RTR Mod 3 RRD ensures precision shooting during the competition. I'm Ivan Loomis. I ultimately ended up in the Marine Corps back in 98, and then got out, kind of played around for a bit, and went into security contracting. And I did that for about six years. And so while I left contracting, and there was no longer a necessity to maintain those skills, kind of became a lifestyle choice for me to continue with physical fitness as well as like competency within shooting. First time competitor Ivan Loomis sees the tactical games as a platform to compare his skill level among some of the most fit athletes and best shooters in the world. While not the lightest rifle on the market, Ivan's rifle, the Radian Weapons Model 1, allowed him to break fast, clean shots. Additionally, the Edgar Sherman design sling was easy to adjust when it came to stowing his weapon for climbs and lifts. North Carolina is known for its unpredictable weather. Hurricane Michael looms over the horizon, adding to the participants' nerves as day one of the competition is about to commence. Natives to the state of Colorado, both Ivan and Tig might find an advantage by consistently training at high altitudes. Without any extensive preparation, Tig hopes his shooting skills will be enough to carry him to a podium finish. Just six weeks ago, Ivan took part in his first ever sanctioned shooting competition, hosted by Sig Sauer at their academy in New Hampshire. As a rookie, Ivan not only won the event, but set a new course record he looks to prove wasn't a one-off occurrence. For the intermediates, their first task of the day would be to pull a 75-pound sled 100 yards to the firing line to make pistol hits on target at 15 yards. And for the elite class, that 75-pound sled would turn into 100 pounds. Their second challenge of the day, even more taxing to the athlete's body, requiring them to carry a tombstone 50 yards, make hits on a target, and carry the same tombstone back to a rope climb. This occurred in five repetitions. The third and final challenge of the day was even more intense due to the obstacle course nature of their task. First firing on a target through small peepholes, then forcing their bodies over various height walls to eventually enter a training house to eliminate their unique targets within confined quarters. Finally, the athletes would run all the way back to the starting line just to make more hits on their original targets.
I just enjoy doing it. It's the it's the competition, the competitiveness, and just the hanging around the shooters. It's 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 like being overseas almost. I mean, they have the the kind of same mindset, and you know, y'all think the same. It's just an enjoyable time, and it, it gives you the adrenaline rush for, from the competition. You know, you kind of you pump yourself up a little bit, and it's just it, I just enjoy it. I mean, it's a it's kind of therapy for me, I guess you could say. Day two of the competition would arrive with a mere 14 hour turnaround. John Tigan is currently sitting top three in his class, while Ivan off to a slow start sits fifth. Today will be their final opportunity to prove themselves in competition. The top three finishers receive a custom made trophy along with an auto ordinance Desert Eagle firearm. Each challenge is a combination of three elements, cardio, strength, and weapon accuracy. Without knowing what's to come, the athletes prepare the best way they can. Progressing the theme of pushing their bodies to the limit, the first challenge of the day is even more rigorous than the climactic finale of day one. First, their strength would be put to the test by jumping over walls, carrying heavy payloads, and crawling under a truck just to get to the firing range, where their sharpshooting skills would be put to the test. Out of nowhere, the event coordinators have thrown a wrench into the competition. Instead of running an original 3.2 miles, the athletes would have to run 4.6 miles carrying all their equipment. Going into the third and final challenge of the tactical games, Ivan Loomis finds himself in third place. A common pistol used in the competition world is the FNS-9 long slide. Tigan will rely on the speed and accuracy of the firearms to advance further in the competition. Running a bone stock SIG P320, Ivan has opted for the reliability of a full-size pistol. After hauling various sized weights and wheelbarrows through uneven terrain, they were required to land hits with both rifle and pistol on two separate targets. This is where all of their skills would come into play. You have this huge backlog of training behind you, like whether it's in the gym, on the range, combine all of it. And like, where do you stack up? I mean, it's like being an alternate in the Olympics, like, huh, I wonder how I'd do. And so to that in the tactical games is kind of cool because it, one, strips away whatever rationalization you have as far as like, oh, I'm probably pretty good. I want to see where I measure up. And it's just ultimately a fun competition where you can, using it as a metric, kind of see where you fall on it. My pitch to somebody who doesn't know about this would be, uh, you know what, come out and challenge yourself. You know what I mean? Again, if you're just standing at the range, particularly if you're, you know, somebody who's, you know, walks the thin blue line every day, or if you're, you know, serving overseas, if you're just going out to the range and doing your normal qualification stuff, it's probably not going to be good enough if and when that time would come that you'd have to defend yourself. So I would say come out, try yourself uh, at the tactical games. I mean, it, it just makes sense. Although finishing top three in nearly every portion of the competition, John Tigan was knocked out of contention after the first stage on the second day of competition. He misjudged where the A box was on the target, and although having a nice grouping just below the A box, he was set back four minutes in penalties, ultimately moving him out of the top three. After dieseling his way to consistent finishes all weekend long, Ivan Loomis finds himself in second place at the end of the competition, further proving his skill in these uniquely formatted events. Completing an event as rigorous as this puts these athletes in a league of their own, gaining a respect only worthy for our nation's heroes.